I'm going to show you how to connect Azure Cloud Storage to your Backup Exec 21 software program. Now, you first need to start out with an account at Azure. So you need to go to azure.com or portal.azure.com and sign up for a pay-as-you-go subscription. Once that's done, and you click on subscriptions to go do that, you need to set up a storage account. So I'm going to assume that you already have a subscription. So if you haven't, go ahead and do that first. And now we're going to go to storage accounts. Now, unfortunately, storage accounts doesn't always show up on the home page. Sometimes it's buried because you haven't used it before. So I'm going to show you how to find it. So we'll click on more services. And then we're going to click on all services. And now we're going to scroll down. So look on the left-hand side for the word storage. And there it is, storage. Now we're going to click on storage accounts. So I'll just click on that. And now I can create a new storage account. So I'll click storage account creation. And then we're going to give the option to choose what type of storage account we want. So the subscription is going to be pay as you go by default. And then you can either create a new resource group or you can use one you've already created. So I'm going to assume you haven't done this before. So I'm going to choose create a new service group. I'm going to call this one backup exec storage. Now it has to all be lowercase, no spaces, no funny characters. And uh, once you're done, just click OK. And now it's created. So if you get any errors, it's probably because you used spaces or uppercase. Now we need a storage account name. And what's interesting about this storage account name is it's not only unique to you, so not only could you not have used this name before, but no one in the entire world can have used this name before. So you have to come up with something pretty creative. So once again, I'm going to call this backup exec storage. And I'll just use cloud at the end. Performance, standard, or premium, it really makes sense just to go with standard because you don't really need to worry about speed so much. You just want to go with the lowest price. Now we have the account kind. So we have several different uh, types of storage v2, storage, which is also v1, and blob storage. So what we want to do is go with blob storage in this case. And the storage v1 and 2 is really organized storage, which typically might be like SQL database, that kind of thing. We won't need to do that here because all that kind of stuff is going to be done on the server side. So we can just go with the less expensive blob storage option. Then we have the option for access tier. So you can choose cool or hot. Cool is going to be less expensive because it's accessed less often. I'm going to choose review and create. And if it looks good, I'll finish by clicking on create. And we see in the upper right hand corner, the deployment is in process. And when it's all done, it'll show our storage at the top. And it has been created. Now I'm back in the backup exec program under storage. And I'm going to click on Configure Cloud Storage. And we get a new wizard that pops up. And I'm just going to call this Azure Storage, but you can call it whatever you'd like. And I'll click Next. And I'm going to make sure I choose Azure from the list and click Next. And now I want to choose the Cloud Storage option. So we know we already created this in Azure, so I'm going to choose just plain old Azure. And now I've got to create a logout account. So I'm going to click on Add Edit and create a new account. And I'll click on Add. And now I need a username and a password. But this is not going to be the same username and password you get into Azure with. That doesn't work. So I'm going to go back into Azure. And I'm going to click on the backup storage again, but this time I'm going to click on access keys. So when you click on the storage, access keys is about halfway down the list. And now we need two pieces of information from access keys. The first one is going to be the storage account name. So I'm going to right click on that and choose copy. And that was created during the uh, creation of the storage. And I'm going to use that as my username. So paste that there. And it also shows up as account name as well. Now I'm going to need one other piece of information, and that's going to be key one or key two. It doesn't matter which one. Copy that to clipboard and paste that into password as well as confirm password. Now there's one other thing you need to do. Make sure you uncheck this is a restricted login account. Otherwise, this just won't work. Click OK. And now it's adding the account. Click OK. Click Next. And look at that. There's our backup exec blob storage that was created earlier. Next. And I'm going to choose the default concurrent operations. 
click finish and it's creating the storage. Now it says it's going to have to restart the backup exec services, which is fine. It won't restart the entire server, just the backup exec services. And once that's done, it should show our Azure storage as being online and connected. And that's been completed. And we now see our Azure storage as being online. If I right click on it and choose details, I can make changes to my storage connectivity, as well as things like concurrent operations or editing the logon account. If I've run any backups, I can also see job history, backup sets, etc. So that's how we create and link our backup exec 21 as well as 20. It works on that version as well to Azure Cloud Services. And this goes all the way back to, I believe, backup exec uh, 16, which would also work for connecting to this, but it does it in a slightly different way. So you may want to check out uh, Veritas's videos for those. In other videos in this playlist, I'll also show how to edit storage to back up to Azure's cloud storage, as well as do restores.